the thing about beginning a blacksmithing career, it is a milestone to achieve a technique. I got into hot work once introduced to an organization called ABANA. It's the Artist Blacksmith Association of North America. It took me about, you know, three, four years to get it, get it halfway down to where I kind of knew what I was doing and I understood the language and I could talk to other blacksmiths and I could show them things that I did and I saw what they did and we compare notes and everybody walks away a better person because they know a little bit more. It's a different language. Blacksmithing is a different language. It took me at least three or four years before I totally understood the language. There are terms for maneuvers on the anvil, drawing out, upsetting. Uh, uh, if you, you see all these different hammers, well, they all have a different purpose. That's called a cross peen hammer, okay? If this was 90 degree, rotated 90 degrees, it would be called a straight peen hammer. The majority of my hammers have a radius face because if you can imagine a radius face coming down on essentially clay or lead, that radius face dimples the surface. It helps spread it. And a lot of this, a lot of what we do here is spreading and directing where the metal wants to go. There's lots of ways to swing a hammer. If you swing a hammer all day long and you hold it in a clenched fist. You're going to develop shoulder problems, you're going to develop elbow problems. Those problems come from the transfer of energy of hitting, some, of hitting steel. Energy transfers through the handle up into your arm, okay? When you're really going to hit something hard, when you're reaching up to the sky and you're coming down and you're going to hit something as hard as you can, it's a different grip. It's no longer a clenched fist. It's, what call, it's what's called a pinch grip. It's between these two fingers, approximately here on the hammer, and then your remaining fingers envelop the hammer to control it and keep it from flying out of your hand. But when you come down, you've got this fulcrum right there. That, that's a fulcrum. And at the end of the fulcrum, there's a snap. And that snap the energy is dissipated by the pinch grip. The snap moves the material at the very end, and I like to call it, it's like blacksmith karate. The thing that most impressed me about, you know, early days of blacksmithing was just the passion that people have for what they do. It's, it's not just a job. Uh, most of the people that do this really, really, truly love what they do. Um, early blacksmiths I met were just totally inspiring to me. Um, the caliber of the work that they created, it was just nothing but magic to me to watch these guys swing a hammer and what they could do. It's a complicated craft. It takes years and years and years to learn it. Uh, pull something out of the fire and you do a, some sort of forging technique on it, you can tell right away it's either right or it's wrong. Right or wrong, and if it's wrong, you get to do it again. And that, that's a three-time hit. That's a three-time hit, because you just wasted the time doing what you did. You're wasting the time getting to do it again. And the third hit is you're wasting the time that you could have been doing something else. I mean, it's not just the work. It's a negative space about, you know, that, that you're seeing through. That, that's also a consideration. You know, if you've got, you got something that's got a kink in it or whatever, you know, it's going to be right there in front of the world. And my customers, they have to live with this stuff. It's not like what I do is perishable. Once I do it, it's there. It's there. They, they don't take it down. The only time it's gone is when they move and somebody else inherits it. People ask, who did that? Where'd you get that? And they, they 
they bandy my name and that's an unpaid cheerleader and I've got I've got an army of them out there and I appreciate every one of them. <laughs>